Boom. For my boy Cooper Cup. For your boy Cooper Cup. <laughs> big pop right there. I mean, well, he's way up high on this list. Way up on the list. The shade, a tick before 60. He's at 59. That's a pretty impressive jump for old Cooper Cup, who somebody needs a hero. He's your guy. <laughs> I need a hero. Uh, but so, so this is pretty interesting. We've been we've been all over this. Fifty to sixty was is, has been fun to talk about. We got a, a a pretty long list. We're not even come close to getting through it today. But uh-uh. that's what this whole off season's for to keep addressing all this kind of stuff and the values and and all that good stuff. But. Uh, here we got Cooper Cup at 59, which are you guys, if you have Cooper Cup, are you selling, holding, or are you buying? And are you buying into 59 ADP for Cooper Cup? Man, so this is tough, right? Cooper Cup, Mr. I bombed the combine, but that three cone drill, though. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Um. So this dude, let's see, Cooper Cup, 94 targets, led the team. They do spread it around very well. 62 receptions. Seven drops, though. It's not a great number per pro football focus. Actually, Matt Kelly had one less drop Ooh. listed on his site, which I know he hates Cooper Cup. <laughs> so I was very surprised that was the one player he did inflate drops on. Normally aggressive on the drops. Right. Drops seem fluky to me, though, because the hands, for the most part, are very strong. It's basically what drove me to take him way back in our mock it up before he fuck it up um, in, the, in the high contested catch rate. And you saw that translate into the NFL. Good after the catch. Mean stiff arm. 12th and yak. Uh, 13th in red zone receptions, but only five touchdowns. Um, but for a rookie, that's that's pretty good, I think. Um, and and and, uh, but I think you might should sell him this high. I think you should sell him high, man. Go one now. one year and done, getting one out on him. I mean, look how high he jumped up. And for what did you call him, an average slot wide receiver at best? Nothing wrong with getting out high. Did I, I say white like receiver? I meant to say wide receiver. <laughs> Well, well I, think both of those. Half, I think halfway through the season, or maybe even two thirds through the season, he was like top five of red zone targets, which is pretty crazy for a rookie receiver to be doing. It's not like six four, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just he he's not a red zone threat. He was just flashing open and hitting a crossing route while the defensive, you know, maybe a play action on Todd Gurley. I mean, the Rams offense just Sean McVay's masterpiece. Yeah, you know. Um, so well, you know, <laughs> Jared, <laughs> you don't even have to say anything. <laughs> Jared Goff's not any good. This offense, Sean McVay's terrible. Coaching doesn't matter. Coaching doesn't matter. Scheme what? He what was scheme? he was calling the audibles at the play at the. They were getting to the line quick, so he could he could call the adjustments at the line. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should just get any piece you can of this offense. Maybe you should just maybe maybe buy him right here. Well, one of the things that I like about Cooper Cup is normally with the receivers first year, the you'll see you know. No catches, no targets, a catch, two catches, three catches, a catch, two catches. And then maybe if he's playing well, by the end of the year, he might have five or six catches. But he starts the year with four for 76, week one in a touch, you know. And he, a couple catches here and there, week four, five for 60 in a touch. And so it just it wasn't one of those things where he even had to build up to be in the playbook. He didn't even have to build up to be in the team's plans. He didn't have to build up to find targets. He started with targets. Yeah. He ended with targets. And then there was a the middle of the season there. Week 10, he gets six catches, six catches, eight catches, five catches, five catches. So, I mean, he was eaten towards the end of the season. There was no rookie wall there. Um, I definitely was not on the bandwagon of just, hey, Cooper Cup's going to be awesome. That was your thing there, Jay Wayne, and I'm not going to pretend like I was saying he was going to be awesome because I wasn't. But he definitely came out and played awesome for a rookie, a rookie wide receiver. Yeah. So, so are you buying at, at 59? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Nick <laughs> shuts that shit down. I'm not buying him now in the top six. I'm not going to buy him, you know, within – I'm not going to buy him one pick over Sterling Shepard. You know, it's 60 for Sterling Shepard. Give me Sterling Shepard. So just sure, just like we were talking about the Lions a minute ago and about how, you know, what well, something's got to give here. There's a lot of a lot of guys coming in here and, you know, there's only so many targets to go around. So I think you kind of got a similar situation with the Rams, especially if they re-sign and bring back Sammy Watkins, which I don't know if they will. Nobody knows what exactly is going to happen, but you would have to think if they do bring back Sammy Watkins that – you know, you're gonna if you're bringing him back and paying him, you're gonna feature him a little more. He came over late, and then now you have the emergence of Robert Woods, who played awesome. Uh, you got Cooper Cup, who played awesome. You got Josh Reynolds on this roster, who could 
could when he got his chances, he was pretty good. You got the the running back in, in Gurley, which you'll throw balls to. You'll you got second these, in the team in targets, right? And you got these two tight ends that you want to get. You want to develop one of these guys into a pass catching machine for you. Um, so you know, I think in this offense, maybe something has to give. Now it's not to say that Sammy Watkins will come back. I think I would wait the couple of picks and take Robert Woods over Cooper Cup. For sure. I mean, he's probably just a little bit older than him, and he's been in the league for... <laughs> he's one year older than he's him. He's been in the league for a couple of years. Now, Cup well, an old rookie coming out, but Marvin Jones is a young veteran here. He's 20 big, dang five. Well said. He's about he's about to turn 26 in two weeks here. I was just looking it up. But, and you know, to give Cooper Cup his love on his rookie season in Buffalo, who couldn't complete passes forever... Robert Woods went 40 for 580 and three on his first year and went 65 for 705 in his second year and four. I mean, he Robert Woods was consistently good with nobody throwing the ball in Buffalo for four years. We thought off air it was three years before he went to the Rams. He's been in the league five full seasons. Yeah, Robert Woods is a veteran and he's about to turn 26. And he, you saw that savvy veteran presence out there. But the thing with the Rams is, is they were tops in points per game. Yep. It's 29.9, so basically 30. 10th in yards per game with 361. 10th in net pass yards per game. 24th in attempts and 7th in yards per attempt. I mean... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe you balling. should just get a piece of this offense. Right, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. I mean, they were, they were the number one in, in average uh, yards per reception at, at 12.6. So, I mean, all that stuff is, is, is fairly positive. They're efficient with their with their pass game and what they're doing and for McVeigh to come over I mean people will probably eventually catch up to you a little bit but you'd have to think a mind like that is staying kind of one step ahead of the competition agreed well the, the key thing is like you mentioned is Sammy Watkins they either tag him or sign him long term but if when you were mentioning that possibility of Sammy Watkins coming back my mind just said firepower so and I said this a lot last year when um, Sam Bradford moved over to the Vikings and just different things like that. Um, you know, Sammy comes in late to the Rams and he doesn't kill it in the targets or receptions spot, but he crushes in touchdowns. And for the a limited amount of time he spends on the field for these guys, which to me just me it just shows like. Like you said, if you're going to keep Sammy, you're not going to keep him, and you're not going to pay him the money that he's worth, and not feature him some more so does that take away from cooper cup and robert woods maybe a little bit you got gerald everett who was the first pick of this regime when the when the sean mcveigh comes over and takes control they didn't have a first round draft pick and the second round pick the first thing they did was took gerald everett and tyler higby wasn't playing terrible last year and todd Gurley's all of a sudden a candidate for 90 catches so there's a lot of volume in this offense and those stats you just read don't lie that was the first season and mike um uh, Shannon, Kyle Shanahan's offense in in Atlanta blew up the second year. And I guarantee you that the Rams are going to look even better next year. How could you think that what the transition that this offense just went through with Jared Goff and is, doesn't even know which way to sunsets, Bo? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. And they just went and got an offense. I don't know if it was set or rise. I don't know. He, <laughs> either he don't one. Know. He didn't know either one. He, if you know one, you can just do the opposite. <laughs> you got the, the other. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a both or none <laughs> kind of thing here. <laughs> right. So just that ridiculousness that was there is just, you got to imagine a step forward for the entire offense. And if, if Sammy's there, I don't know how much that hurts everybody else. But let me just tell you about how awesome Robert Woods was for a minute before he hurt his shoulder. Week three. He got it. He started the season a little slower than Cooper Cup. I don't know which what was going on there, but week three goes six for a hundred, two nothing in really week four. But then he goes five for sixty, five for seventy, five for sixty, four for seventy and two, eight for a buck seventy and two, lighting the world on fire. Eight for eighty, blows his shoulder up, misses three games, comes back six for forty five and a touch, and doesn't do a whole lot week sixteen. Oh, Robert but Woods was Robert, you had to have him in your lineup, bro. You couldn't put him on the bench. No. We got one league where we got massive receivers. We got Diggs and Landry and Amari Cooper and Crabtree and we and somebody else I'm missing in there and. Robert Woods was starting every single week on that Got to. in that stretch. I mean, the the Rams are scoring the most points in the league, and they're the best in uh, yards per reception. Now they're kind of low in total receptions, which was twenty second. But 
they're very efficient because they were getting efficiency right. and getting to and scoring the points right. they were leading you don't have a million catches when you're getting downfield blow right. like robert woods and cooper cup and Gurley was scoring from 90 yards away yeah when you got Gurley, you, you don't need to, you don't get a million catches when you get down the field and actually put it in the end zone because your drives might not be but four or five plays sometimes so in, in a startup for me personally i'm gonna wait and i'm gonna take robert woods and probably pass on cup if i have cup completely agree i'm okay with hanging on to cup yeah, and and not doing Rides anything with them. So, but what if Sammy Watkins does resign with this team? Do you what? How do you? Which, which one of those guys would you kind of want to get rid of? If you had to get rid of one, if I had to get rid of one, still I'm going to lean on. I think I'm, I'm going to get I'm rid of Cup because maybe he has a little bit more perceived value. I'm keeping exactly. That's true. He's got a, a basically a three quarter round value bump over Robert Woods here, and maybe because he's a little younger, and Robert Woods still had that stink of Buffalo on him. But I don't know I, what it is, but people just started immediately loving Cooper Cup. Yeah, like that, they hated him. He hit the, they loved him, and then he blew the combine. He's like a folk hero, right? Yeah. Well, he blew the combine, then everybody hated him, and then he's, and then now everyone's just like, oh my gosh, Cooper Cup, like you when you need a hero. Well, Cooper, <laughs> it's got to be fast. That's the highlight. Music, I don't know. By the way, I don't know if I saw more guys sliding to the ground in one direction and the balls go in the other direction and they caught it like cooper cup made some incredible catches this year these were not all all in the bread basket catches these were hands catches falling down balls going wrong cooper cup impressed me this year like i was saying earlier he definitely played a lot better than i ever thought he would and but there is that value he's a cold hero and uh, you know if you can i would also rather have sterling shepherd you mentioned that earlier i think might have got passed over because you were kind of in mid-sentence but you said you would rather have sterling I think I'd rather have Sterling Shepard over Cooper Cup as well. Yeah, That's but fair. if you got Cooper Cup on your team, enjoy it, grab some catches, but it wouldn't be to like maybe package him up and find your way into a Will Fuller um, just to bring that back around one Old more time. Will's really getting Old some Will's name there. drops on this podcast. Or here. like, who like, knew? I didn't know you would love this guy so if much. If you're at fifth, if you're at average, you know this is an average out of five different drafts. But you're in the top. The end of the fifth round is Cooper Cup here. So if you're got, if you're looking at Cooper Cup and there's a couple picks to be had, and there's Deshaun Watson on the on the on the um, queue there, and there's OJ Howard, a big name like that, a youngster tight end, Kenyon Drake. You know these two guys are about to get taken. What trade back a couple picks, pick up a little bit of equity somewhere, and then wait on Robert Woods. Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm down. I'm down. Down. But I'm, yeah, like Jay said, just grab yourself a piece of this Rams offense because McVay ain't going anywhere, and they got it working. It's very fun to watch. It is. Hope you didn't trade Todd Gurley. <laughs> there were so many people being like that. We just want to make. We almost get it in every single episode we every week because we were we were one of the few people that we knew telling you not to trade talk early. And in like, the off season, we said there was we were banging the drum for not trading Todd Gurley and don't listen to the noise about Deshaun Watson. He's going to be good. And then all throughout the season, we said oh, we yeah. kept have to say well, don't trade you know, Todd Gurley because the schedule's about strength to schedule is going to get bad. So you're going to want to get rid of Todd Gurley. Oh, Shut up! Yeah. Yikes! You're dumb. Yeah. Just tune in and do what we say. <laughs> all right. Well, I think uh, is this a wrap? Good players don't matter. You just you you right. want, you hang on to the good player and right. the strength of schedule comes up. And the reason that you Ride have a, out. an elite player like that is because strength of schedule doesn't matter. Ride it out for that particular player. Right. That's right. They're matchup proof, and that's why you take those kind of guys and you hold on for dear life. 